Okay, so welcome back from the break. You're still watching The Morning Rush here on Metro Television. My name is Desmond Okrekud, as you can call me, Desi Fade in the Star Boys. Uh, we're about to have a conversation, and today I am privileged to have uh, three big men in the academic circles, ladies and gentlemen, all professors. Uh, I think that it's going to be a blessing or two. I might become a professor, but I don't think I'll do that. But that's, that's fine. That's fine. So we're going to be talking about the Ghana Communication Technology University 23rd prestigious lecture. And so I'm going to take my time and introduce um, our guest um, who will join us this morning on set. And the very first uh, person, uh, Professor Robert about Hinson, he's a big man. Uh, <laughs> he's a pro vice chancellor of the Ghana Communication Technology University, and he's a marketing person. He's a, he's a sales trainer. He's he's everything. He's an author. He's he's a big man with lots of eyes. Join us uh, this morning. Welcome, Prof. Good to be here. Yeah. Again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Home, so. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. This is your home. And also, uh, let me to the my extreme uh, left. That is a. Uh, he is a professor, fresh one. So I want to say congratulations to you, <laughs> Thank you Professor yes. Ebenezer Malcolm. He is Thank the dean you. of the School of Graduate Studies and Research at the Ghana Communication Technology University. Uh, congratulations to you. Thank How you. does it feel, you know, from doctor to prof? It's very, I mean, I don't know how to describe it. Fulfilling <laughs> and very, very, I mean, Warming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations Thank you. to you. Sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. And um, also, our final guest is Professor Manoj Maharaj, the professor of uh, he's a professor of information system and technology from the University of KwaZulu Natal yes, in South Africa. I mentioned it right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you're, you. you're welcome, Prof. Thank, Thank you. Uh, I guess this isn't your first time in Ghana. It is my first time. Oh, it's yes. your first time. Yeah, first visit here. Yeah. Oh, that's very great. short visit. Came mm. in last night and I leave on Saturday. But, oh. Uh, Hopefully next time it'll be a longer stay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, then let me just go ahead and ask that before you got into Ghana, you know, what what were you really thinking about Ghana, what it was going to be like, and has it met your um, expectations? I'm sure it will, mm. uh, except I arrived late last night and it's okay. raining this morning. Uh -huh. So apparently it's the rainy season mm. that started. Yeah. Ask him how age will turn into it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, age will tell, you know, always making, making sure that, you know, visitors who come around feel at home yes, you know, and, and yeah, enjoy yeah. themselves. Yeah. yeah. You will have a good time. You have a good time. I'm sure. You will. You yeah. will. Prof, let me, um, Prof Science and I mean, let me, because if I mention Prof, I already said Prof, yeah, yeah Prof Science. Yes, let's, let's begin with this particular um, lecture. Yes, please. Please tell us about it. This is the 23rd so, edition. So, mm. so let, me, let me just explain in broad terms. Mm. The blessing and the curse of universities in Africa. You know, sometimes we get pummeled with things like, oh, what you do is too academic, what you do doesn't benefit industry, you know, you, you are in an ivory tower. So it's very important to have avenues or outlets for connecting with, mm. with the real world, you see, because a university is only useful to the extent that not only do we do teaching and research inside the university, but we have platforms where we can share some ideas to make society better. Okay. So it's in the spirit of that outreach dissemination mode that we have instituted this um, prestigious uh, lectures at the GCT. You went, interestingly, I think it's our 10th anniversary too. So mm. it's very profound that we have Professor Maharaj here when we are 10. 10, 10, 10 is quite mature. And over the years, we've had a galaxy of stars. My, my senior in the marketing and business ministry, um, Martin Mensah, has come through before. Uh, the famous... Uh, uh, Kujo, what's his name? Imani. What's his name again? Uh, Franklin, Franklin Kujo. Franklin Kujo has come through before. We've had different types of both civil society actors, private sector players, and policy people come through. Mm. And we have the blessing this time of uh, Professor Maharaj come to speak about issues attendant to digitalization, teaching and learning universities. Because mm. when COVID came, yeah. even universities that didn't want to become digital to go digital. Mm. So COVID sort of accelerated the move towards digital. Now, the thing with acceleration is that if you are moved because you didn't want to go, now that you are there, you need solid mechanisms, yeah. routines to ensure that you are leveraging technology appropriately mm. to take your university for it. So that's why we are blessed 
to have him count that is our 23rd. My boss, Professor Hina Fokwa, will chair as vice chancellor. Mm. So we are inviting the whole world to join us. Tesano is not far, so they're just trooping <laughs> around for and to have a splendid yeah. time. Yes, great, sir. great. We'll get into the, the thing, but I mean, for GCTU, yes. uh, the, the story in, in 10 years, yes. how, how would you describe so, it? So GCTU yeah. is a very fascinating phenomenon. You know, the university itself, we received initial accreditation, I think, in March 2006. Mm -hmm. So we are 17 years, give or take. Okay. However, as a public university, we are three years in August. So as a public university, we are fairly new. Now, when you look at the act that establishes, establishes GCTU, we are supposed to deliver ICT-based courses. Mm. So our core mandate is information communication technology. technology. Yeah. So we have a faculty of engineering, a faculty of computer and information systems, and then we have a business school. Now, the thing with even the business school offering is that if you come to a GCTU business school, you would necessarily receive injections of technology, mm. whether you are studying finance, logistics, or marketing. So the blessing of GCTU is that whichever way you come through, you get a fairly good dose of technology before you leave, which is important because we live in the days of the metaverse. We live in the days of information technology, yeah. artificial intelligence. So if you are going to get a degree that doesn't make you technologically savvy, then you've only done half the journey. So that's the blessing of the Ghana Communication Technology University. We, we, we just launched our new gatehouse two days ago. And if you come there, you see scrolling at night in bright red color, ah, okay. the National ICT Center of Excellence. That's great. So I, we I don't should, play at all. I should pass by uh, you you know, should, uh, you should. sometime soon. Yes. Uh, Professor Malcolm, um, yes, sir. this is from your, um, the School of Graduate The School of Graduate Studies. Yes. Um, yes how important is this for you? Yeah. As Prof have said, uh, mm. this is very important for us. Uh, this is a synergy of academia meeting with um, industry players and also partnership with the various sectors. And as you've said, ICT is a key, I mean, mandate of Ghana Communication mm. Technology University. So for that matter, we try to bring, as you've said, uh, practitioners and also policy makers from diverse, I mean, their background to come and share their, I mean, views and also their thoughts with our students and the general public. Mm. So this is a special program for us, as we term it prestigious lectures. lectures. And Professor Maharaj is one mm. of our prestigious lectures for today's event. Yeah, that's great. And, yeah. and the theme is about digital transformation. Yeah, in um, the 21st century, yes, challenges. Tell us about it. Yeah. Challenges, I mean, the uh, prospect and the, <clears throat> the way forward, mm. in the sense that, as you are aware, uh, we are in 21st century. And then uh, when we talk of fourth industrial revolution, we are talking about technology. That is a main game changer. Mm. And uh, if you are aware, World Economic Forum have earmarked, I mean, digital transformation as one of the main core area for next future generation. So you realize that a lot of effort, even United Nations, when you talk of uh, sustainable development goals, they captioned actually, I mean, transforming education is one of the areas. Mm -hmm. And even Ghana and other, I mean, uh, allies of the UN have put a lot of effort into this. Last year, we had a whole, I mean, uh, forum on transforming digital education. Mm -hmm. And here we are talking about higher educational institutions. And Prof, as somebody who has been the leaders in the field, we decided to bring them him down to mm -hmm. come and share with us some of these, I mean, thought-provoking areas. Yeah. yeah. Now to Professor Maharaj, um, what, what is your general thoughts about uh, this whole thing, the digital transformation in, in this current dispensation, and what would you be talking about this afternoon? If you could just give us some uh, snippets of sure. it. Yeah. Sure. You know, uh, this talk is, uh, the timing is incredible, in, in a mm. sense that if this talk was given five weeks ago, it would have been different. Mm. And I'm saying that because of the recent uh, explosion of artificial intelligence applications onto the world. I mean, we, you know, you've probably heard of ChatGPT. Yeah. Uh, and and that, that, is, uh, that has made a 
phenomenal impacts. Uh, GPT-4 has just been released last week. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and every day, there are some groundbreaking uh, uh, developments in the, in the AI world. And that, that, is, that promises to make a fundamental change in the way we do things. And uh, if we don't, uh, you know, if we don't, so, so in the future, it's, uh, many people think that, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, your job is going to go because an AI can do your job. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> but, but it's not that, you know, it's the jobs are going to go to people who use AI against, mm. uh, instead of people who don't use AI. Okay. You know, so it's not going to be that AI, uh, throughout history, we've had technological revolutions. Mm. Uh, from the earliest times, uh, uh, Professor spoke about the you know, fourth industrial revolution. We could talk about the various you know, first, second, third, mm -hmm. as, as, as the World Economic Forum has named it. But at each stage, there have been the people that says, oh, this is the end of the world. Right? Uh, you know, the word saboteur mm -hmm. comes from uh, the, the, the sabot, the shoe, that people threw into the spinning jennies, you know, the, the, the weaving the looms, okay. to, to stop progress, to say, this is taking away jobs. Oh. Uh, you know, so they mm. threw those wooden shoes in there, and that's a, so, so, so. So historically, you know, at every stage, when television first came up, I, I remember I, I've been teaching now for, for 33 years. But uh, I've, I've, so in the early 90s, when, when the World Wide Web made made its appearance uh, at universities, we all thought, "Oh, that's the end of the world," you know, as we know it, and universities are going to suffer. Yeah. But universities have thrived by embracing the technology. Uh, and, and, and then when Wikipedia came out and uh, online encyclopedias, we thought, oh, you know, what's going to happen to research? It's becoming so easy. But research hasn't uh, disappeared. It's just gone turbocharged. Mm. So, so what we can do with AI, uh, you know, what we couldn't do, uh, or what we could do without AI, but now we can do much faster with AI. With AI. So, so, so this is where, uh, you know, so, so my talk is going to be, it's going to be about, you know, the, the problems faced and, mm. and the, the issues that... You would, you, would, you would recognize this as well, even if you, you think about it. Uh, even in, in your environment, as technology comes through, you'll meet yeah. people who say, ah, oh, this is no good, you know, uh, or, or people who say, let's embrace this technology. Yeah. Uh, and and, and so, so there's going to be this, uh, uh, the, the, the change management processes are critical to, to any technological development. And, uh, you know, I don't know the, the university too well, and I unfortunately won't have time, but what I've got three, I've got two students, I think. Uh, two of my doctoral students actually right. work at, the, uh, at, at GCTU. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I, I get to know about the university through them. But uh, a university like uh, GCTU is, is ideally placed. You will need to be agile. Absolutely. Uh, if we're not agile, because we don't, I can't predict tomorrow what's going if, if somebody could sit here and predict the future, mm. I'll say they're lying. Mm. Because uh, the, uh, it's disruptive change. And with disruptive change, you don't know where it's, where, where it's going. But what you, need, what you need to understand is that you have to be prepared for that change. So you've got to have an agile footing. The university, the, the ma university managers, people like, uh, uh, sitting around me here, mm -hmm. have to take this point of view that we need to be fast thinkers, think on our feet, and be able to change direction very fast. Okay. Universities, though, are, are, are behemoths, right? They're, they're large organizations, and it's like a ship at sea. It's very hard to change sometimes. Very right? It's very hard to change. You know, we, we have uh, many stakeholders, uh, students, uh, uh, the public, uh, the mm. committee, the council, government is a stakeholder. So all of these things make it difficult to, to, to react. And, and private sector, of course, can react very fast because they don't have to report to all of these uh, yeah. uh, different stakeholders. So we need, to, we, need to, we, we need to find a way. And I, I, I come from a you know, very, very Kozulu Nittel, University of Kozulu Nittel. Mm -hmm. We've got over 50,000 students, five campuses. Uh, and it's an old university. It's, it's a new university uh, post the merger, but you know it, it's it's an old university, it's, and it's okay. much more difficult to change. Mm. And, uh, and and I see it there. And uh, but perhaps the GC2 is a more uh, a smaller, more compact, agile yeah. institution yeah. might be better prepared. And and you know technology uh, gives uh, somebody famous once said, I, I don't know who, I can't remember, but it says, you know, it's not how big you are, but how big a shadow you cast that is important. Okay. Right, uh, and, and, and the internet allows even the smallest person to cast a massive shadow. Yeah. Right, you know about influencers, yeah. and you're an influencer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, what kind of shadow you can cast mm. uh, through, through technology. And this is where, uh, you think of small countries like uh, South Korea and Japan. They're tiny countries, 
But what, what's the influence on the world? Absolutely. Through technology. Yeah, through technology. And, 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 and technology allows us to bootstrap and, you know, uh, bootstrap ourselves. And, 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 and also, um, you know, don't follow the standard trajectory okay. of development. All right. But go around. Prof, yeah. It looks yeah. like we've had, we've had a, a bit of the lecture here <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, I've enjoyed that. Yeah, so Prof, two mm. practical examples. Okay. A couple of years ago, I was teaching a level 200 class at the University of Ghana called Social Responsibility and Ethics. And I found the class was 600, 800, 900, 1,000. So I said, okay, no problem. So I created videos and loaded it up on Udemy. So mm, they yeah. became Udemy courses. So my students could go to Udemy, watch the lectures, take the tutorials, and actually finish and get a certificate from Udemy, and still come into a brick and mortar classroom in Ghana and still follow yeah, the so, same okay. lectures. Today, I have eight courses of, on Udemy with 24,680 students from 174 countries who speak 49 la languages. Think about this. One man in Ghana with 25K students, 174 countries, mm. and that's how technology can affect the world. Yeah. Can you imagine all these scholars in Africa had that sort of um, access? Chat GPT. Yeah. I'm writing a new book on customer service in Africa. I just go and I say, customer service in South Africa gives me something. Botswana, Gambia, Senegal, Ghana. What it gives me is not always correct because yeah. I know the content quite well. Yeah. But it gives you a sense of how AI sees the issues. Yeah. So I think the applicabilities are very massive, macro, micro, uh, subject level, lecturer level, faculty level. And I think Africa has a chance to leapfrog yeah. if we yeah. really use technology well. We've got, we've, got, we've got just a few minutes to, to wrap it up uh, by talking about uh, digital transformation and this whole um, lecture that is happening. Uh, that's today, Prof. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So yes. Today, today, four o'clock. Four o'clock at, okay. at Tessano, very close to the where the policemen are. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So please, if you come in, we'll give you red carpet treatment. And we have a particularly skilled presenter. Yeah. So I think we need to come, share together, grow together. And I think Ghana will be the better off for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is happening today at the Ghana Communication Technology University campus at Tessano at 4 p.m. today. So if you thought that what uh, Professor Maharaj was saying was, you know, very insightful, there's more of that later today at 4 p.m. on the campus. So please make sure that you pass by, go listen to a lot of uh, this. I mean, for as a young folks, it is also important for us because um, a few back, weeks back, we're talking about, you know, uh, blockchain and all of these yeah, things. They're part of yeah. the digital transformation thing. So yes, please sir. make sure that you pass by. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, too. Professors yes, for yes. joining me. <laughs> yes, Professor yes. Ebenezer Malcolm is the Dean of Graduate uh, School and Research yes. at the GCTU and also Professor Maharaj from uh, KwaZulu Natal University in South Africa. He's the main speaker for this uh, 23rd prestigious uh, lectures and also Professor Abu said our very own. He's the Pro Vice Chancellor of the Ghana Communication Technology University. So this will wrap up the show.